Last time, we studied the final digits of square numbers. Today, we're going to generalize our finding from last time by looking at the remainders of square numbers when they're divided by a given number. Let's recall what we found last time. Last time, we found that the final digit of a square number depends only on the final digit of the number that it's the square of. We organized our finding in a table, as pictured. The meaning of the table is that if the final digit of a number is an entry in the gray row, then the final digit of its square is the black digit below it. So, for example, if you have a number that ends in 4, its square ends in 6. The other thing that we found last time is that the sequence of the first nine terms of the black row is symmetric. It reads the same forwards as it does backwards. The final digit of a number has an interpretation as its remainder when it's divided by 10. For example, the remainder of 8,317 is 7 when it's divided by 10 which is the same as its final digit. Why is this the case? Firstly, a number ending in 0, such as 8310, is a multiple of 10. Next, a number with final digit d is going to be a multiple of 10 plus d. For example, 8317 is 8,310 plus 7. Multiple of 10 plus 7, its final digit. Finally, a number that's a multiple of 10 plus a number between 0 and 9 has remainder the number between 0 and 9. The final digit of a number is always between 0 and 9. So that's why the final digit of a of a number is its remainder when it's divided by 10. Returning to our table, we can reinterpret it as saying that if the remainder of a number when divided by 10 is an entry in the gray row, then the remainder of its square when divided by 10 is the black number below it. When we think about things in this way, we see that we can look at the remainders when squares are divided not only by 10, but by k for any counting number k. Because we're going to be talking a lot about remainders when numbers are divided by k, we'll abbreviate remainder when divided by k with mod k. That's standard terminology that mathematicians use. In this language, the phrase remainders of squares when divided by k becomes squares mod k. There is another name for squares mod k. They're also called quadratic residues mod k, which can ab be abbreviated as qrs mod k. Here I've listed the first 14 squares and the remainders upon division by 7. Reading across the first table, the remainder of 1 upon division by 7 is 1, the remainder of 4 upon division by 7 is 4, 9 is equal to 7 plus 2, so the remainder when 9 is divided by 7 is 2, 16 is 14 plus 2, and 14 is a multiple of 7. So the remainder when 16 is divided by 7 is 2. 25 is equal to 21 plus 4, and 21 is a multiple of 7. So the remainder when 25 is divided by 7 is 4. 36 is 35 plus 1, and 35 is a multiple of 7. So 36 leaves remainder 1 when divided by 7. And 49 is a multiple of 7, 
so its remainder when divided by 7 is 0. We can continue and compute the remainders of 64, 81, 100, and so on when they're divided by 7. And we get the numbers in the second table. And you might notice that the remainders cycle. They go 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, 0, and so on. The cycle is of length 7. This is analogous to the cycle of final digits of square numbers being of length 10. Note also that there's a symmetry. If you look at the first six digits of the sequence of squares mod 7, it reads the same forwards as backwards, just like the sequence of final digits of squares. Let's give some general statements about the sequence of squares mod k. As background, note that the sequence of counting numbers mod k cycles every k terms. So for example, if k equals 7, if you look at the remainders of the counting numbers when divided by 7, the sequence goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, and so on. This is a generalization of the fact that the sequence of counting numbers have final digits that cycle in a cycle of 10. The value of a square mod k depends only on the value of the number that it's the square of mod k. So if you have two numbers that leave the same remainder when divided by k, then their squares leave the same remainder when divided by k as one another. This is a generalization of the fact that if you have two numbers that have the same final digit and you square those numbers, the squares will have the same final digit as one another. The two things above imply that the sequence of squares mod k cycles every k terms. And the final thing is that if you look at the first k minus 1 terms of the sequence, that sequence is symmetric. It reads the same forwards as it does backwards. We saw that that was true of the sequence of final digits of squares. And the reasons why these things are true are parallel to the reasons why the same facts are true about final digits of squares that we talked about last time. Here I've written out some examples. I've listed the squares mod k for each k between 5 and 9. And note that if you look at the first k minus one of them for a given k, they read the same backwards as forwards. Here I've listed the squares mod k for each k between 2 and 13. For each k, I've listed them in order of size rather than in the order that they appear in the sequence. These numbers are rich with patterns. We'll be exploring these patterns in subsequent lessons. One pattern present is that it turns out that there's a formula for the number of squares mod k in terms of k. That's what we'll be discussing next time. Where we're headed is toward answering a deep question. This is the question of for which k is a given number n a square mod k? For example, for which values of k is 5 a square mod k. In the tables that I've exhibited, you can see that 5 is a square mod 10 and mod 11, but not for any other values of k in the tables. So we're headed toward 
classifying all values of k for which 5 is a square mod k, for example. Thanks very much for listening.